Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I want to talk about <clears throat> return on capital. Uh, Joel Greenblatt, with the magic formula, uses return on capital as one of the two metrics he used to screen companies. And return on capital is really a measure of how good a business is. It's one of the most powerful metrics to find companies that are going to be long-term compounders for you which obviously works wonders for your portfolio over the long term. So today I want to run through an example of how to calculate return on capital as Joel Greenblatt calculates it for the magic formula. There's many ways to calculate return on capital, but I want to go through specifically how he calculates it. So let's quickly take a look at what the formula uh, for return on capital is that Joel Greenblatt uses. And this is really you know, return on tangible capital employed. Okay, So return on capital, <clears throat> pre-tax operating earnings, also known as earnings before interest and taxes, EBIT, divided by tangible capital employed. Now, you know, don't be intimidated by this. You know, there's probably going to be a lot of new terms here for you. Uh, everything seems intimidating when it's new, but this really isn't super comp complicated. So just take a moment to sit with it and run through the formula a few times with different companies, and you'll, you'll start to understand kind of why this is a, a really useful formula. <clears throat> Tangible capital employed, which is the denominator in the return on capital, is simply net working capital. Uh, plus net fixed assets. Now the net working capital part of that is just total current assets minus total current liabilities. Okay, And you're going to add that to net fixed assets, which on the balance sheet is simply total net uh, property, plant, and equipment. That's gross property, plant, and equipment minus uh, depreciation costs. Uh, so <clears throat> let's do an example for Apple, okay? Uh, so I'm in Morningstar, I'm in Apple, I'm going to go to Financials, and I'm going to scroll down to, <clears throat> let's see, I want the tables version. Now that EBIT number that you saw is simply operating income. That's earnings before interest and taxes. So I'm going to use the trailing 12 months number, $65.59 billion. Okay. So that's going to be right here. That's going to be our EBIT, 65.59. Now I need to find networking capital, which is total current assets. Uh, and for that, I'm going to click on this balance sheet. Right here, it's just showing us uh, a couple categories within the balance sheet, but I'm going to want some more specific categories. So I got to click on that. <clears throat> now I'm going to scroll over. I want the quarterly numbers. So looking at quarter two, 2020, I want to make this a little wider so I can see what's happening. <clears throat> I'm going to scroll down. Let's see. And I'm looking for total current assets. Uh, for quarter two of 2020, we've got $143.75 billion. So I'm going to put that here, 143.75. That's my total current assets. Now I want to find my total current liabilities. So that is, <clears throat> now we're in the total liabilities section. Total current liabilities, 96.09 billion. Okay, so I'm going to subtract that from 143.75. And then I'm going to add the net fixed assets. So let's come back into here. I'm going to come up under the assets. And I'm going to look at 
So here's my total gross property, plant, and equipment. Like I said, I want to remove the depreciation. And I've got total net property, plant, and equipment. So that's my net fixed assets, 35.89 billion, okay? So when I run the math here on this formula, I get a return on capital uh, of 78.5% for, for Apple. Now that's an insanely high return on capital. This is a fantastic business in terms of return on capital. Um, just for comparison, Costco, I ran the numbers, has about 19% in terms of return on capital. And Costco is a phenomenal business. So really anything over 20, 25% uh, is, is a strong return on capital. Uh, especially if you're looking back five or 10 years and it has a consistent return of capital over 20%. Um, so, but this is insane for Apple, 78.5%. Uh, so I just wanted to give that overview. I'm gonna read uh, from the appendix in this book by Joel Greenblatt, the little book that still beats the market. <clears throat> just... Uh, why he uses these particular metrics for calculating return on capital. And it's just a little blurb in the appendix about why he uses this particular method. So he says, return on capital was measured by calculating the ratio of pre-tax operating earnings, which is EBIT, to tangible capital employed, networking capital plus net fixed assets. This ratio was used rather than the more commonly used ratios of return on equity or return on assets for several reasons. EBIT, or earnings before interest and taxes, was used in place of reported earnings because companies operate with different levels of debt and differing tax rates. Using operating earnings before interest and taxes allowed us to view and compare the operating operating earnings of different companies without the distortions arising from differences in tax rates and debt levels. For each company, it was then possible to compare actual earnings from operations, EBIT, to the cost of the assets used to produce those earnings, which is tangible capital employed. Uh, networking capital plus net fixed assets or tangible capital employed was used in place of total assets <clears throat> or equity. The idea here was to figure out how much capital is actually needed to conduct the company's business. Networking capital was used because a company has to fund its receivables and inventory, but does not have to lay out money for its payables, as these are effectively an interest-free loan. In addition to working capital requirements, a company must also fund the purchase of fixed assets necessary to conduct its business, such as real estate, plant, and equipment. The depreciated net cost of these fixed assets was then added to the networking capital requirements already calculated to arrive at an estimate for tangible capital employed. So that's from Greenblatt's book. Uh, and one of the great things about Greenblatt, you know, he ran a fund for, I think, 20 years. Uh, and that fund generated 40% annual returns for 20 years, which, you know, even starting with a small number, if you're getting 40% returns for 20 years, I mean, it, it's just insane how, how large growth that is. Um, and one of the things, he spent a lot of money back testing how you know different metrics uh, correlated with kind of stock returns and so this particular way of calculating return on capital you know he put a lot of thought and a lot of data uh, is behind kind of this this approach for calculating return on capital um, Obviously, just a brilliant investor. I highly recommend, you know, checking out videos from him on YouTube, reading his books. He has multiple books out on investing in the stock market. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to quickly run through 
how Joel Greenblatt calculates return on capital in the magic formula investing approach. Uh, I'll probably do another one of these videos to kind of walk through how he calculates earnings yield, which is the other metric. And it's really a measure of how cheap a business is. Because what he found is when you combine a metric for how good a business is with how cheap a business is, that combined kind of ranking is really what drives the magic formula investment screener. And uh, it's, it's proven to be a, a great way to kind of screen stocks, to find stocks that are both good and cheap, which is really how Buffett uh, and Munger through Berkshire Hathaway and other great value investors have, you know, grown their portfolios to be so large by finding businesses that are both good and cheap. So... Uh, just wanted to introduce return on capital. Let me let me know if you guys have any questions about return on capital in the comments. I made a video a couple days ago about uh, invisible moats or hidden moats. Uh, it was a, based on a blog post from Chris Meyer who wrote a, a book called 100 Baggers, Stocks That Return 100 to 1 and How to Find Them. And return on capital was, you know, the most kind of important metric for finding companies that have moats, either obvious moats like Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, or hidden moats, which, you know, when you find companies that have hidden moats, uh, often you can get them for a much lower price, uh, which is obviously a very important part of the equation for finding great long-term investments. So anyway, guys, that's all I got for today. Uh, smash that thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button. I am over a thousand subscribers, obviously, but I'm still, you know, still trying to grow the channel and really hit that 4,000 watch hour metric that uh, is the other metric that I need in order to start monetizing the channel. But uh, that's all I got, guys. I will see you in the next video. Take care.